I'm going to show you all the details of mounting my servos right behind me for the turnouts. So let's go. Hi, I'm Tom Kovichak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. I mounted a few more servos back here. I did it a little bit differently than what I did previously in another location and I used a different board you can see the board I use right here it is the gravity nano input output shield for the Arduino nano by DF robot and as you can see it's only nine dollars and 22 cents at this time it's a lot better than the old shield that I was using that didn't have an input for the servos. As you can see on this one here, it has an input. So let's get started with this right now. I'm working on another set of turnouts right here on the slide out section. I have, a, like the other one, I have a crossover and a single turnout right here. There's a crossover. So I have three servos on here and this time I only have three relays. I'm using a DF robot shield for the nano and on this one I have a 5 volt input right here that I could use so I'm using the power supply until I put this up here permanently. I'm testing out the servos right now to see if they're in the correct position. When I when I placed them in here I made sure that they were in the the 90 degree position straight up or as close to straight up as you can get it because you never can get it directly straight up it's either off to one side or the other side depending on how the little knurls on the uh, shaft are what I'm what I'm going to try to do right now is with the push button determine which way I have to go with the servos so this first push button right here is for this turnout going onto the siding. So I could see already that right here I have it too close. So I'm going to have to pull this servo out and move the arm back just that way a little bit. Because when I press the push button for to have it go curved it's going to be pushing it up against the foam so I have to move this back a little bit so see what I'm talking about here see it's pushing it up against the foam right now okay it clicked the relay to change the polarity of the frog but I need to move that one back okay so I'm gonna to have to pull it off and move it back maybe like one one little notch on the uh, shaft okay for these other ones they look pretty good and let me move this out of the way here because I have it underneath that right there I'll put this over here and I don't know if you can see it right here but this one is under this scenery right here they're both straight right now and when I hit the push button it's going to go in the diverging route so I want the the arms to move this way on this one and that way on that one we'll see if I got them correct so this one is going backwards so I'm gonna to have to change this one here I'm gonna to have to do that in the code and then this one was going correctly as you can see it's close now and when I click the button for it to go to the diverging okay that one is all right this one is backwards so this one I have to move the arm and this one I have to change this with the code now since I have it with a nano all I'll have to do is pop this out put that on hook it up to the computer and just reverse the numbers on 
this one right here. So I have to determine which one this one is right here. Okay, three and four are on the crossover and number two is on here. So I'm gonna to have to change the code on three to reverse it. That's the only code change I'm gonna to have to make for right now. I think the, the travel is okay because I, the, I checked the travel with the other servos that I had on the other sets that I did over there. And the way I mounted these, this is, this is just a one inch piece of foam right here with no plywood underneath it. So what I did was take some duct tape underneath and filled in the hole and then put the servo right up on top of it. So the servo is bas basically floating in there. You can see it moves just a little bit. And I don't think that's gonna be any problem. If it is, if it becomes a problem, I'll just have to stiffen it up with a piece of wood underneath there. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is pull this one out. I'll take the power off of that. So I'll take the screw out. So I'm just going to have to bring it out and move it back. Just one, one notch on the knurls. A notch on the knurls. And that should make it okay. And what I did was put the wire down through the hole because I'm not using the, the mounting holes to secure it. I'm just securing it on the tape itself. So it's going to sit there like that. So it'll be back here. Now this one here, number three, I'm just going to have to change it in the code. Program the Nano. And so I'll put it right back in. Make sure the power is off when you're inserting it into the shield or into the board. Press it down in there. Turn the power on. There you go. This is going correctly now. It's coming back, so it's gonna pull the points that way. And that one's correct. That one's working correctly. And this one over here, we're in good shape. I didn't take the spring out of this one yet. So I'm gonna to have to cut the spring in here so we'll have a smooth motion. Now all I have to do is measure all three of these for the wire and then bend them in there and then I'll be able to put the scenery back in place. On my last set of tyrants, I used uh, 25,000 music wire. This one, I'm gonna be using 15,000. So I'm gonna try it out on one turnout first to see if it's, it's strong enough. This is available at Hobby Lobby. Uh, you get, uh, I don't know how many in there, four pieces. I think it was $1.99 when I bought these. I bought these a couple of years ago, maybe three or four years ago. It could be, but uh, you know, they have all different sizes from 15 thousands up to 39 thousands. I think I got 15, 20, 25, 30, and 39 thousandths in the music wire. So we'll try this out and see how that works. I cut the wire just a little bit longer than what I needed. In fact, I probably cut it a little bit too long because you can see I have that much excess. I This end right here is going to go on the throw bar and it's going to go underneath and then I'm going to bend it over this way so it holds in place. And this one right here, you see I have that at a 90 degree angle from the other one. That one's going into the servo and I'll do the same thing. I'll just flip it over to lock it in place. So this is the tricky part right here. The 15,000 wire did not work. I had to go to the 25,000 wire as in the previous turnouts. And it took a while to bend them to the right position. And I had to adjust the uh, throw on the crossover 
on both ends, I had to, to, to tweak the numbers on the code. So what I did is pull the Nano out, changed the code, put it back in, tested it out. Everything was hunky-dory. So, okay, we got straight. Well, let's cross over now. Go back to straight again. Okay, let's go down to the siding. All right, there we go. We're good to go. Let's cross over onto the inner track again. There we go. Piece of cake. And if you're wondering why I don't put a lot of turnouts on like a Mega or a PCA 9685, like 16 of them, and set it up on the, on the uh, model railroad is because, just because of this right here where you have to tweak a little bit here and there. If I did it on a PCA 9685, it would be too confusing to go working with 16 servos or even more servos than that in the code to try to tweak it. It's easier to, to, to do like a handful, like four at a time, like I have on the Nano and on the Uno over there. Makes life a lot easier. You don't, I don't want to complicate things any more than I have to. I mean, you could do a lot of things with Arduino, but let's just keep it simple. It makes life a lot easier. I'll be using the DF Robot module for future projects with my servo turnouts. It makes life a lot easier with the input that they have on there. I may even change the one that I have that's not the DF robot. I had to use a nine volt power supply on that one and a voltage regulator to bring down the voltage to five volts for the relays. So this way I could power the servos and the relays from a main five volt power supply. I mounted the boards underneath the little module that I used for Kali fuel as you can see right here, it tucks away in there nicely. So, until the next time, we'll see you.